Hi, I'm Erin Jean McDowell, and welcome to this episode of Bake It Up a Notch. 2021 was quite a doozy of a year, so I wanted to start this year off doing the thing I love most, baking, but taking it really easy. This is one of my most made recipes of all time. I love eating this recipe, and it's actually inspired by something that my mom made for me all the time growing up, and that's the version I'm going to make for you today. But the cool thing about this recipe is it's infinitely adaptable. There are so many things that you can do with it. So after I show you the basics of how this easy bake comes together, then we'll mix it up a little bit and show you some other awesome variations so you can make it your own. So I can't wait to get started baking. As always, if this seems like something you'd be interested in, please do me a favor and click like and subscribe and let's get baking. Before we get baking, let's go over the equipment you're gonna need to make this recipe. It is very minimal. Yay! So you're going to need a silicone spatula and you could also use something like a wooden spoon if you wanted. We're also going to need a whisk for bringing our dry ingredients together. We'll need a mixing bowl, and if you want, you can actually also mix this in the food processor, which makes it a really, really fast recipe, but it's so easy, I just wanted to show you how quickly it comes together by hand. And then, of course, we're gonna need a parchment-lined baking sheet to bake our biscuits on. That's really it, it could not be any easier. So I actually make this recipe all the time when I'm feeling homesick, because when I was growing up, my mom would make something very similar to this. I've adapted it very slightly. Love you anyway, mom. But this version, she used to call them scones. And I don't really think that this recipe is scone-like. I think it is biscuit-like. And it's not very sweet. It still has a lot of the same advantages of scones, that flexibility, you can really add just about anything into it. But I do wanna point that out, that when I was growing up, she would give these to me and call them chocolate chip scones, but I refer to them as chocolate chip drop biscuits. So we're gonna start by adding our dry ingredients into the bowl. We've got flour, brown sugar. I'm just gonna crumble it in a little bit, break up any clumps with my hands. And as always, the full recipe is linked in the video description below. So check that out, save it for when you're ready to bake. We're gonna add baking powder and also baking soda. I'm gonna grab a little bit of salt to put into this as well. Perfect. So we're just gonna give that a whisk to start. And the reason that we're doing that, it's basically taking the place of something similar like sifting. We're just trying to get all the dry ingredients mixed together as best we can before we add cold unsalted butter, which I need to grab from the fridge. Ta-da! <laughs> We'll just add that cold cubed butter. It's cut into about half inch or one centimeter cubes. Now, this is the point where you could use a food processor to pulse the butter to combine into the flour. You could also use a pastry cutter, but I have to be honest, it's such a small quantity. It's really fun for me. I just love to mix this recipe by hand, so that's how we're gonna do it today. Hopefully this also shows you how easy this recipe is and how it comes together in just minutes. I'm sort of just cutting the fat into the flour the same way you would for like a classic buttermilk biscuit or even for pie dough. The difference is that I'm going to incorporate it fully. I either want the butter to be in very, very small pieces if you can see any of them or to be fully incorporated to the point that the flour mixture almost looks more like cornmeal or a coarser mixture. So we're just gonna keep mixing for a while. If you have hot hands, if at any point it starts to feel sticky or soft, you can just throw it in the refrigerator for a few minutes, or you can enlist the help of a pastry cutter, uh, a fork, anything like that is gonna do the job great. In a food processor, this just takes about eight to 10 pulses, so it's a very easy recipe, goes even faster when you use the food processor. With that said though, I'm pretty much done. Look at this texture. If you have any pieces of butter, they should be really nice and small like the ones you see here. Now this is basically the base of the drop biscuit recipe. From here we can add our uh, liquid ingredients and also our inclusions, but I've got something special to say about those. The last things we need to add to our base biscuit dough are some liquid to bring it together and also any inclusions or different flavors we want to incorporate. These are the two places where you can really play with this recipe and customize it to suit your taste. 
So today in this recipe, I'm gonna be using buttermilk to bring the biscuits together. But when I first made this recipe to bring into Food 52, I was actually using leftover whey, which was a byproduct of regularly making my own ricotta cheese. It's a great way to eat whey. <laughs> it's a great way to use leftover whey and reduce food waste from making things like yogurt, cheese at home. But also you can really get creative by adding other kinds of dairy ingredients as well. Creme fraiche, sour cream. You can of course make your own buttermilk kind of mixture, adding a little bit of vinegar to regular milk. And you can also use things like yogurt. So the options are really there for you. And if you're ever wanting to make these biscuits and you look in your fridge and you don't have buttermilk, what do you have? Because you can probably still make the biscuits. Now, when it comes to inclusions, I have a lot to say, because when I was growing up, that's how my mom kind of customized this for our family. She would make half of the batter using ingredients that she was interested in, usually dried fruit, chopped toasted nuts, things like that. Then she would make the other half batch with mini chocolate chips for my brother and I to enjoy. They were so delicious and it's still my favorite way to make them. So that's how I'm gonna be making them for you today. But just to mix it up the same way my mom did, I'm gonna do half of the batch with chopped chocolate, which is my favorite. And I'm gonna use the other half batch with mini chocolate chips the way she did, see if it brings back some tasty memories for me too. If I start talking about what kind of inclusions we could put in these, I could be going all day because really anything goes. Depending on what kind of inclusions you're adding will kind of determine at what point you wanna add them to your mixture. If it's a dry ingredient, you can usually add it after you incorporate the fat. But with things that are a little bit fresher or softer, like fresh fruit or berries, you may wanna fold some of them in a little bit later in the mixing process, just so they don't get too squished by the act of mixing. In the case of my chocolate biscuits, I'm actually just gonna add it in at the end, just for the sake of being able to split the batch into two different flavors. <laughs> so to add the liquid, we're just gonna make a little well in the center of our bowl. We're gonna add our buttermilk. We're gonna add one egg and some vanilla. So I'm starting by just giving it a little bit of a whisk to break up that egg. We've already dirtied the whisk, so why not use it twice, am I right? And then we'll just come in with the spatula and stir until the mixture comes together. Now, you can actually kind of make this even at slightly different consistencies. If you leave out some of the liquid or add it gradually, you'll end up with a slightly crumblier mixture, which can be really great if you want a slightly drier end product. I like these to be kind of cakey and light. So the amount of liquid that's listed here will make a pretty sticky batter. And you just go ahead and mix until everything comes together and is well incorporated. At this point, you could of course scoop the dough plain and you'd have yourself some biscuits, or like I said, we can add my inclusion. So I'm gonna divvy it up. Got a little bowl. I'm just gonna scoop about half in here. As an adult, I really like chopped chocolate over chocolate chips usually. So I'm gonna add some chopped chocolate in here. I just like how it stays gooier, meltier. I like the variation of chunk size. <laughs> it's the thing that does it for me. So um, I'll mix that in until it's incorporated. We'll do the mini chocolate chips in the other one because I still think of that as the way that mom did it. The reason these are called drop biscuits is because just like drop cookies, like sugar cookies or chocolate chip, all you have to do is scoop them and drop them onto your baking sheet. So you can do this with two spoons. You can even use a slightly damp hand and kind of scoop that way. Today, just for the sake of keeping them nice and even, I'm going to enlist my favorite help, the cookie scoop, the ice cream scoop, whatever you wanna call it. This is um, a quarter cup approximately size, and that's a pretty standard regular ice cream scoop size if you've got it. Just gonna scoop them and kind of drop them onto the tray. I sort of like keeping them a little bit rough, like you don't need to keep a super smooth, beautiful scoop because the nature of this recipe is that it is a little bit of a craggy sort of dough. I like the little bit of variation on the surface and it's just gonna make some bits on the exterior be a little bit crisp, which is giving way to that super fluffy light interior inside.
For final finishing touches, you can use a little bit of a brushing of egg wash or a little bit of cream just to help the surface brown a little bit more evenly, only if you want. Today I'm actually gonna skip that and I'm just gonna put turbinado sugar on some of them and then I'm gonna leave some kind of bare and plain and we're gonna finish them with an icing later for just another sweet twist. Once you've portioned or added any finishes, it is time to bake. These biscuits bake at 375 degrees Fahrenheit or 190 degrees Celsius, and they're gonna bake until you see a nice little bit of golden brown around the bottom edge and only a little bit of browning on the craggly top parts. I talked about this a little bit in my biscuit episode of Bake It Up A Notch that I did with my dad. What do you have at the house? Got uh, the white, white cheddar and chives. Perfect. I don't have any white cheddar. I only have yellow cheddar and I don't have any chives. I have scallions, but that will work too. I love to add savory ingredients, things like chives or scallions. And of course, I love to add cheese. If you're gonna add ingredients like this, do it after the fat is incorporated into the flour. You can just add it right then before you add your wet ingredients. I was dying at all the people saying he looked like Santa. <laughs> Someone was like, Aaron's dad is Santa? And I was like, yes, yes he is. Okay. Every kind of chocolate, obviously, milk chocolate, dark chocolate, white chocolate, caramelized white chocolate, Fresh fruit, berries, uh, apples, pears, uh, vegetables, scallions, onions, herbs, chives, parsley, dill, uh, ooh, uh, thingamabobs, who's it's, what's it's. It could really be anything. <laughs> Now that you've gotten the hang of this very easy recipe, I wanna show you some other really fun ways to use it. It is so versatile. So one of my favorite ways to use this drop biscuit dough is for shortcake. And one time during the summer, I was going to a picnic and I needed a shortcake to serve a lot of people. And this slab shortcake was born. You just take the dough, press it into a sheet pan and bake it as one giant biscuit. And it is so yummy and slices beautifully. That's some ASMR for you. Gross. <laughs> Whenever you're handling this dough and you're not just making it as a drop biscuit, it can be helpful to use wet or lightly greased hands to help press it into an even layer so you don't end up with the stickiest hands in the world. Let's bake it. Just like you can press it into an even layer in a sheet pan, you can also press it into any other kind of baking pan you want. In this case, I use nine inch round pans and I'm gonna use it to build my strawberry not so short cake, which is a naked layer cake. Isn't she beautiful? Just the prettiest but easiest cake you ever did see. And it's gonna be a stunner anytime you serve it and everyone will eat the whole thing every single time. It's been my experience. Okay, on to the next. One of the ways I use this dough the most is as a topping for cobblers or even as a topping for pies. You can just crumble the dough right over the surface, leave it nice and craggy. You're gonna get some nice nooks and crannies in the process. This is a savory cobbler recipe. It's got parsnips, onions, squash, all kinds of yummy good savory things. And I'm topping it with a turmeric biscuit that has a little chili in it too. So it's a little bit spicy. That's another great way you can add you know, other flavors to this biscuit dough is just to add different spices and seasonings right in with your dry ingredients. This dough is so versatile and you can use it in so many ways. I've used it as like a little bun for a makeshift sandwich. I like to use it for biscuits and gravy when I'm feeling extra lazy on a Sunday morning and I just want the easiest biscuit that doesn't require a lot of chill time. And of course, I love to use it for individual strawberry shortcakes. And of course, there's just probably a lot of other ideas too. So if you've got ideas of how to use this biscuit dough, be sure to tag me and use hashtag bake it up a notch because I want to see them. Even in the simplest recipe, there can still be some places where error can happen. So let's talk about possible mistakes. 
The good news is about these drop biscuits is that even if you make a mistake, they're still probably going to be very delicious. But there's a few things you can keep an eye out for. First of all, too much moisture. I mentioned that you can kind of be flexible about the amount of moisture that you add, and that's a really fun part of this recipe. But if you ever add a little bit too much, it can cause the biscuits to spread a little bit more in the oven. This is a great example, this biscuit here. We used fresh raspberries as the inclusion. We'd already hydrated the batter completely. Then we folded in fresh raspberries, which also contains some moisture. As a result, some of these biscuits are a little more uneven and some of them spread a little bit more due to that extra bit of moisture, those pockets inside. The good news is this is still going to be a very delicious biscuit, but something to keep an eye on when you're mixing if you're really looking for a uniform end result. Also on this tray, you can kind of see that a few of these are unevenly sized. That's something very normal that can happen when you're just using two spoons to shape or you're using your hands to drop the biscuits on, and there's really no problem with it. Just remember that if there's too big of a difference in size, big biscuits are going to take a lot longer to bake than smaller biscuits. So you may have some uneven browning in your end product. If you really care about them looking really super even, enlist the help of that ice cream scoop. The final thing that can happen is too much browning. This is a really great example of a recipe where it's helpful to know your oven. If you know that the heat source in your oven is towards the bottom, maybe make sure that you keep your biscuits a little bit closer to the top so they don't get too dark. We had a couple of biscuits that we didn't rotate during the bake time, and a few of them got a little bit dark on the bottom. You can see a comparison side by side there with these raspberry biscuits, which are a little bit more blonde. So again, it's just something to keep an eye on and make sure you're rotating those pans a couple times between baking. And when I mention rotating, I'm not just talking about rotating the pan on the shelf. I'm also talking about if you're baking multiple pans at the same time, make sure you rotate between those shelves too. That's gonna give you the best chance of all your trays baking as evenly as possible. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Bake It Up A Notch, where I shared one of my favorite recipes of all time, happens to be one of the easiest too, and I really, really hope that you get baking and make some version of your own of these delicious baked goods. Remember, if you do, please share them with me, tag Food52, use hashtag Bake It Up A Notch. I wanna see what you're baking in your kitchens. Be sure to come back later this month for our Bite Size episode, which is on my three favorite alternative flowers. I can't wait to share them with you, and until then, happy baking.